Hello everybody, welcome to another scripting tutorial. Now, I know I haven't done a scripting tutorial in quite a while now. In fact, I think my last one was like about a year ago or something like that. But, um, I don't know. I was just sitting here and I decided to make another tutorial. Um, well, a very requested tutorial was the data store tutorial. Um, now, data store is, well, the new version of data persistence. Um, you used to use data persistence to store things. Again, this was a long time ago. This was like a year ago. Um, but now you don't use data stores. Um, I think it's got something to do with... I'm not, I'm not sure why they use data stores. Now I think it's something to do with security or not losing data anymore. Um, or just to, it's a better way of doing it. I don't know. But for some reason they use data stores now instead of data persistence. Uh, if you know why, let me know. But anyway, this is how to do it. So... Here I have a um, a leaderboard script, so when the player enters the game, they get their leaderboard. Again, you should know how to do this. If you don't, you should probably watch my previous tutorials, um, probably my advanced uh, series. Um, anyway, and then I also have a brick here. Now, this is my spawn. Uh, here's my brick. When I touch this brick, this is what happens. I get 100 points and 100 coins. Um, Okay, so I've got points and coins, and I get 100 points, 100 coins when I touch this brick. So, this is how to do the data store. So you can save these points and you can save these coins whenever a player touches your brick. Anyway, local data store equals game get service uh, data store. Service. I shall explain what this does afterwards. Um, get. Okay. In fact, I'll explain what this bit does first. So, I'm not sure if we've gone over services before, but um, we need a data store service um, if we can, if we want to use the data store functions. So, all the functions in data store, like all the functions that are used to save and get your um, saved values and saved points, saved coins, you need to get your data store service first before you can do that. Um, now data store uh, is data store service and then we use a function called get data store on here um, this takes an argument of a string uh, and this string should be the name of your data store I'm going to call my data store um, general stats or I don't know you can call it whatever you want you can call it uh, peace pod is epic you can call it whatever you want um, I don't know, I'm going to call mine uh, P store. Okay. So, yeah, this is the name of your data store. Um, I mean, if you're making a game and you've got, I don't know, you need to save the, the, the zombie kill points, then I don't know, call it something like zombie data store or something like that. But anyway, I'll call mine P store. So, here's my data store in my little object variable. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called save points and this is going to be equal to data store uh, function get a sync um, and then key and in fact I need to make a key as well now I need to explain what this does now um, data store get async uh, with a key basically every player should have a unique key um, and this key is used to get values uh, and set values in the data store. Uh, to make the key unique to every player, it's probably best to do something like this. So, I don't know. Let's say. Uh, actually, we need a key for points. So, we need a separate key for points and we need a separate key for coins. Um, actually, no, we don't. No, we don't, because we're going to save points and coins in an array, or a list, or a table. That's what they call it in Lua, a table. Uh, we're going to save points and coins into a table, like tables. You just know what they are. Like points, coins, into a table. Anyway, so our key should be something like this. Um, I don't know, user... Uh, I think in the um, in the wiki they do it like user... And then they concatenate player.userid. 
something like that. You can call it whatever you want. So I just decided to call mine, which I'm going to call it player, player dash, uh, and then the player's ID. Now every player has a unique ID. Um, this is the number on their profile in the URL. But um, so if, since every player has a unique ID, they should ha now have a unique key in the database or in the data store when they get into your game. Okay. Now we've got our key. Um, if we do data store get async with the key, this key let's say um, let's say that uh, the the player Roblox joins the game, uh, their key or their profile ID is one. Their key should be player dash one. Okay. This means that Roblox has joined the game. Um, so now, hold on. Let me just say saved values. Uh, saved values is now equal to whatever values or points and coins that Roblox has or previously had in the game. Uh, now, if the player has not been in the game before, this get async should return uh, nil to saved values because this key does not exist in the data store. Okay, if they have not been in the game before, the key should not exist in the data store. Therefore, this should be equal to nil. That is why we do an if statement. If save values, then. Now remember, if save values is pretty much the same thing as writing if that is, or I think that's if it's not nil. Um, so yeah, we're testing to see if it's if save values is not nil. Um, so yeah, you can just write if save values which means that there is a value inside safe values which means that the player has been to the game before now it's best to do some sort of key because we're going to be saving the coins and the points as a table it's best to do some sort of um, some sort of key so uh, save format I'm just making a comment uh, save format is points and then coins so I save points first and then coins um, okay so points dot value equals saved uh, values one and coins dot value equals saved values two okay so remember saved values is just the um, it's just a uh, it's a table that we're getting from get async okay we're returning a table with points and coins inside it and it's in this order you can have it in any order you want. I just chose to do points first and then coins. Okay. Okay, that works all good and fine as long as save values, uh, as long as the key exists. If the player hasn't been in the game before, we need to make a new key for them or we need to make a new um, element in the data store for that player. So we then do an else. Uh, if save values is equal to nil, then we go to this else bit which means that they've never been in the game before we need to give them a new uh, we need to give them a new slot in the data store therefore we do data store set async you see how easy these functions are you've got get async for getting values and set async for setting values this takes two parameters uh, or arguments a key and a value to give it the value is going to be uh, a table okay and it's going to do points dot value and coins dot value. Okay. Um, to make this a bit more clear, I'm going to make that table into a, a table variable. So local uh, values to save equals this table. You should all know how to make tables. If you don't, watch my previous tutorials. Right. So we now do data store set async the key is here which is a unique key and the values that we want to save uh, which is this table here okay so now this table should be stored inside the data store with this player's key and whenever we want to get the values in the table all we need to do is data store get async with their key which is here okay and that's pretty much it now what we need to do is we need to um, whenever the player's points or coins 
get updated we want to save those okay what we're going to do is I've got a um, a player leaving script as well um, so when the player leaves the game we will save their scores automatically okay so normally I wouldn't do this in the player um, removing event because I don't know say the server crashes I'm not actually sure if points and coins or if, if if the data store saves when the um, server crashes so it's probably best to update your points and your coins as you get them so I don't know if you've got a mini games game and you've got your main script it gives the player 100 points you should probably save it there and then um, that's what I do but for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to be saving it in the player removing event and I'm going to hope it works because I haven't actually tried saving in the player removing event yet so We'll hope this works. Right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to do data store set async. This is actually going to be really easy. It's going to be like two lines of code. Uh, local values to save equals table where dot leader stats dot points dot value now the reason I didn't have to do player dot leader stats dot points dot value in the on player added bit is because um, I've already got a points variable here um, but I don't here actually not here but I don't here anyway so value to save is the points first again so again we should probably do the key um, save key so points and then coins just to, just to make it a bit more easier whenever we come back to the script so we know that points are first and then coins are second and same thing but for coins okay so values to save uh, are points and coins in the table and then we set async with the key and the values to save but we don't have the key yet so we're going to make the key um, we should probably copy and paste the key to avoid any typos Right that's that now uh, I think that should be done yeah um, I'm gonna see if this works now and then after that if it does work uh, on the first time then I will go over the entire thing once more and hope you understand it so I'm gonna publish this to my Roblox uh, I'm gonna play the game it's just loading give it some time there we go. Okay then, so points and coins, lovely. See my leader leaderboard here. Uh, I'm going to touch here. Okay, oh yes. I have 1,400 points and 1,400 coins now. If I leave the game and rejoin, I hope to still have these values. Yes, I do. And that is how you do data store. <laughs> Alrighty ho. I'm going to go over everything again. Uh, and also, I need to go over limitations because there are limitations to data store, uh, which I need to quickly tell you. Um, and then that will be the end. Right, so. Here we have our on player added. Data store is the data store service. And all we're doing is we're getting the we're getting the data store, and each data store needs to have its own name. And I've decided to call my data store uh, Peas Store. You can call it whatever you want, but mine's called Peas Store. So here's my data store. Um, if I want to get the values inside the data store, all I do is I say data store get async, and I pass it the value of my key, which is unique to every player. Okay, it's just whatever you want concatenated with your player user ID okay then if the player has been in the game before uh, this value should be a table with their points first and then their coins okay points in the first element and coins in the second element um, if the player has not been in, this, uh, in the game before then this should be equal to nil in that case we need to give them a key in our data store okay 
So this is only nil if they don't have a key in our data store. That's why we need to give them one. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've given them the key with the with the values that I want to save, which is their points and their coins. Right. Remember to put dot value on the end because I sometimes get caught up with that. And then in the player leaving section, I've decided to save their their points and coins. Again, you need to have their data store with the correct data store name, which is the same name as you've given or as you've declared up here in the on player added event. Okay. Um, and this one's a bit more simpler. All you do is you get your values to save in your table here, and you then set async with your key, which is the same key again. Uh, make sure you have player dash. Uh, it doesn't have to be player dash. It can be whatever you want. Player underscore, player colon, but make sure it's the same. Make sure you keep it consistent. Um, and then with the value to save, I'll set async. And that's it. Uh, data store get async and set async. It's pretty much in the name. Get is your getting value. Set is your setting values. Um, and yeah, that's how you do it. Now the next thing is limitations. Now I've actually got the wiki open here, and I'm reading the limitations um, of the data store. Now if I drag this over here to you, so you can see. Um, let me zoom in a bit. Request limit. This is quite important. Okay. Now these are the maximum amount of requests that you can do in your game per minute. If you do any more than these, uh, than the maximum request, if you make any more, um, so if you make more requests than the maximum you can do, um, I'm not sure actually what happens. You might need to read it. Uh, I think it either errors or it doesn't save. So yeah, you can see how the requests is really important. Now. These are the amount of get asyncs you can do in a minute. 60 plus the number of players in your game times by 10. So if I have two players in my game, the number, or the maximum number of get async requests I can do per minute is 60 plus uh, 20, which is 80. Um, same thing for set async. Now, <clears throat> you've also noticed that there's update async. Um, I'd rather leave this for you to read on the wiki. Um, and you know, I think I can give you an example of it. But all update async does is it, it does pretty much almost the same thing as set async. So data store update async. You give it your key. You pass it this time a function. The function gives you the old value of the data of the um, the old value that was stored in the data in the data store, and you have to return the new value that you want to save. Uh, that is how you use update async. In fact, I might give you an example here. So yeah, instead of calling set async, I could have called um, data store update async. Don't worry about this, by the way. I'll, I'll explain what this does afterwards. But you, if you don't want to use update async, just stick to using set async. So you pass it your key, and you pass it a function. The function gives you old value. Um, okay, and then you return um, values to save. Okay, Basically if you want the old value uh, you can do whatever you want to the old value um, and then save that. But you know just stick to using set async if you get confused by that. But um, yeah if you want to know more about data stores just read about it on the wiki um, just type in on Google Roblox data store and click the wiki so wiki.roblox and then you'll find it. Um, and that's only if you want more information about data stores. I've explained all you need to know about them so far. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, another thing I wanted to tell you is I might be um, I might be making more um, more tutorial videos soon. If you do have any requests, then just let me let me know what they are on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, I am at peacepodrblx. Um, I should be putting a link in the description so you can ask me what uh, tutorials you want me to do in the future. If you want me to do a filtering enabled tutorial then just let me know because I was thinking about doing a filtering enabled tutorial um, but then I decided to do data stores because more people wanted data stores. Anyways, that shall be all and yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial people. Goodbye.